push. Here we're doing a join under the wall. Um, this will be for expansion. We'll have a saw cut there, similar to this here. See, this was a pretty bad connection here that's gonna be cleaned up still uh, because it just didn't line up very well. This time we're clamping on. And next time here, I won't snap ties off here. Have a look around here. Next time I'll leave those ties there so I can really clamp it on. However, the wall's changing direction slightly because you can see there's a taper under the house here. So here, this will have, in a minute, we'll be tying rods on here. They'll be tied onto here with a two inch gap so that the wall can slide in and out as it wants to expand and contract, okay? There'll be a saw cut here and the crack will go there. Uh, basically, we've got our ties in here. We've got our marks here that have all been marked with a string line. Can you see those marks here? They've all been marked with a string line and they've been measured back 150. See that other mark right there? So what that's doing is making the wall gap perfect and then we're gonna level these up. This one's already been done. If you have a look over here, you can see we've already put props on here. So this wall's been leveled. So coming along here, Hamish, put a note there to put a filler in there. So here we've got a, 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 um, like a filler piece. I can't remember the name of them. Just to step the wall down, see? So it still ties it together. Two inch filler. And we come along. Uh, what we've done here, just to use up all our panels, we've put uh, 150s, 300s, 200s in the wall, and plywood. But we've done them all in 600 increments. Look, 600, 600. 600 and 600. These for a section on the back of the wall where it's not as obvious, we don't mind if there's more lines on here. Uh, we actually make them up with three rows of pins in a section of 600 because it gets a much straighter panel. And then once we got them in 600s, then we carry them on and fit them to the wall. So that's another 600. You can see multiple pins. But where we've joined it here, we've only put two sets of pins holding the ties. That's plenty. So um, up here, you can actually get a, a hinge angle but we haven't got one of them yet. So we've just made all this like uh, make do with pins and stuff here to make that strong, still strong as. We'll put a piece of timber in the front to fix that up. These are a connector plate for connecting to our props. You can see up here the yellow and green props out of 9045 pine and LDLs. Um, normally they'll run down at an angle like this to support your wall and, and get it nice and level on the face. But in this case, we're running pretty flat. So they just sit on like that. Check in place. Now if you have a look over the back of the wall here, just around here, they just go like this. Sit there, drop a pin through the round hole. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna go down lower because we'll use that top one here for our whaler bracket. We'll let them square that up a little bit. Pin, chuck us a hammer home. Should be on my so obviously earmuffs normally. Right, that's the earmuffs home. Then get the driver. Now Hamish shall level the face of the wall there for me. Yell out when you're good. Yeah, that's that good there actually. That pulled a bit more, is that alright? Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. Okay. Uh, that's it, that's propping the walls. So we just repeat that all the way through. So this here, that's our slip joint. So I'll stop two inches back from that.
normally uh, I get Angus down here to give us a hand with this and um, I'll hold the rods exactly where I want them and he'll go through and just put a few tyres and then he'll finish tying it while we do other stuff. The back of the rod here, you can see the face of the wall is on this mark so I don't want to be coming out too close to the front of the wall. Don't want to risk anything poking through it. And I'll probably even just fold these down like that. So, okay, so we're putting a, an extension on the vertical bar. Doesn't need to be quite that long, but that's just what I've cut. That's just so we can tie this extra top bar here, because this is a little bit short. One more home. So we've run this extra rod through. Hamish is running them in parallel to the other rod for me. After this tie, go get that silicon hand, put it plug in those ends. Yep. Alright. You're rolling. You bring some panels over home. Starting one's a little bit clunky. We've got to get this, these pins in. So quite often we'll pack them up on uh, wood like we did over there. See there? But here we're not. We're just going straight on the concrete because the concrete was running up a little bit. These tires come in here, Tam. That I'll touch up in a second. Pins in. You have a look here, it's picking up the tyres on this side. See here? Keep the wall tyres to hold the wall together as it's getting poured. See the marks on the ground here, the black mark again. So I'll kick it into there. Then, I've got my hammer drill. You can see the panels floating in the air a little bit, but in this case, the concrete, it doesn't really matter because that's locked in to the mark, which means it'll be straight. And the concrete's up and down a little bit, uh, so the panels will find their own level. You can see the same thing here. When they're dead level on a wooden plinth, uh, this doesn't matter as much. They, uh, we put the panels in first, then the pins. Wait. No. But you can see because they're floating in the air a little. It's actually easier to get those pins in first. Nice and flush there. You can see this one hits a little bit. It finds its own way. Sometimes I'll pull back a little. Oops. Not much to grab. Wait, hey. What's your next trick? You don't want to use tech screws. If 
just a shear, look at that. So that's pulled in a little bit. Once the tyres are locked in, that stops that spreading. 